Hey guys, I'm Oreo. I'm an Australian Grandmaster Zerg player for the Cranky Ducklings. This is going to be the first in a playlist of videos where I take a deep dive on the ZVT matchup from the Zerg perspective. For reference, I'm a 5.6k player, and I've got an above 80% win rate in Zerg vs Terran. While I'm not as good as the pros, I think the style that I've mimicked from mostly solo and other players is the current ideal way to play the matchup. In this first video, I'm going to show the absolute standard opening in ZVT, and I'll go into depth on the specifics of the build. I'll tailor the timings assuming I have no knowledge other than my opponent has done a Hellion opening, so I'll cover 2-1-1 and other variants in future videos. So if you're a new player and don't really know how to read into things like what what air, uh, what air unit is my opponent making, etc., this should be a really standard opening with standard sport timings that you can do whenever you see Hellions, even if you don't have any vision. So in future videos, I'll show you how you can adapt this build to all the possible openings that Terran can throw at you, and I'll still bring it back to the same mid-game ideas I talk about in this video. I'll see you in the game. Alright, so we're in the game. I'm going to start by talking about Overlord patterns. On most maps, you'll send your Overlord to the linear third base, shift queued to your opponent's main. On some maps, it might be the triangle, and in that case, what you should do is always send your first Overlord to scout the pattern that ends up next to your opponent's main, because we want to dive into the main with the Overlord later. So if my opponent's natural was down here, I would send the Overlord here, then here, going into the main. But since the main is here on this map, and the natural is here, I'll send the first Overlord here, and then over here. The second Overlord will check the second pattern, sorry, the second path. So on this map, I'll come here, shift queued back to here. And the reason is, we want this Overlord to turn around at around 1.30, because then it'll be back in time to see a bunker going up if an SCV slipped past our overlords and maybe made the barracks out of vision uh, if your opponent is 2 or 3 maxing you. So the standard build is we go 13 overlord and then we just make drones. At 200 minerals we send a drone to our old natural to take our old natural. So right now and then we're going to make three more drones. The first of these drones is going to get rallied to the minerals, and we'll use it uh, just to mine minerals. The next one will get rallied to the extractor, and the next one after that will make the spawning pool. So the order will be the hatchery at 16, the extractor at 18, and then the spawning pool at 17. You can see the overlord is going here, and it's going to go next to the main base. This overlord will come back, and it should be back at 1.30 in time to see the uh, SCP making a bunker, if there is one. We rally the next three drones you make to the gas, and then we make another drone and rally it to the natural. We're going to go up to 21 supply worth of drones, and this drone is going to get rallied to the third base, and it's going to take it quite early. Once we're at 56 gas, we're going to send two of the drones out of the gas to the natural. And this is because we don't actually need a link speed that early, we just want minerals so we can take our third base as soon as possible. As soon as the two hatcheries finish, we're going to start four zerglings and a queen at each base. And you'll notice we still haven't made an overlord, and that's intentional. We're going to intentionally supply lock ourselves so that we can get a third base much faster. So at 27, we're going to make an overlord in our main base and a drone at our natural. The reason I say overlord in our main base is because you always want to make your overlords in pretty much every matchup from the main, because drones will mine more if they're made from the natural since it's a shorter rush distance. If you are maybe a lower level player and you think this might be confusing, then don't worry about it too much, but it's it's quite important to always make overlords from your main. So we go 27 overlord and then a drone at our natural, and then we're going to take our third base. And after that, we're just going to keep making drones while defending the reaper. If there's no reaper, I would wait until 2.30 because your opponent's reaper might have just been late and it might also come into your main base. And at 2.30 you should send two zerglings across to scout if your opponent took a natural because he might be putting a bunch of barracks in a corner or make, keeping a bunch of barracks in his main base and doing a one base build and you want to see that coming. So if your opponent doesn't make a reaper, at 2.30 you should send two links across. So when the two queens finish we're going to inject our main and make a kachuma. And then we're going to make a drone at our natural and an overlord in our main at 32. We're also going to get link speed as soon as we get to 100 gas. And you'll notice when we pull off at 56 gas, we have 100 gas and 100 minerals at almost exactly the same time. At 31 supply. So we'll get it at 31 supply before the overlord. Then at 32 we get our overlord and then a queen at the, at the natural. Um, 
And this is because we want to inject our natural as soon as possible. We want this uh, qu queen to just make tumors. Then we make two more drones until 36. At 36 supply, we're going to get an overlord in our main first. Um, because if we don't get it at 36, we're going to be supply blocked. Then we're going to inject our main and make another two tumors. Then we're going to spend all of our lava in the main. We're going to make two of that lava go to the, the extractor. We're going to spend all the lava at our natural, which isn't that much because we didn't inject it. And then at around 40 supply, we're going to start another queen in our main. As soon as our queen finishes in the natural at 44, we're going to start another queen. And at 324, not at 324, at three, around 320 to 330, the exact timing doesn't matter too much, we're going to send a Ling on the path that the Reaper isn't. So if your overlords are spread, which I like to do one overlord in front of the main, and then the next one to see the Reaper jump off area, and then the next one outside this space, you basically want to create a ring of vision with the overlords with each overlord you make. If my overlord sees a Reaper, let's say here, I'm going to send a Ling out here at 320, maybe shift queued here, and then to the main base. Because it's... If I send it out at around 320, it'll get there right when my Ling speed finishes, and I might be able to get a full scout off of my opponent, which will be very helpful. So I'm going to inject my natural, get another queen. When my third base finishes, I'm going to get a queen at my third base, and then make this lava into an overlord. I found that this is the uh, easiest way to line up all the lava so that you never get supply blocked. So this lava is going to make an overlord, and I'll usually rally it somewhere around here or here. As soon as your third base finishes two, you should start up six Zerglings, so three pairs, because usually around the time that your third base is done, if you start six Zerglings then, they'll be in time for a like gas first four Hellion timing, for example. So we're going to start six Lings as soon as we can, and then we're going to go back into droning. When this, main, when this queen in our main finishes, we're going to inject with either one of the queens and make a tumor with the other one, and then we're going to bind this queen as part of our creep queens. So we'll have three creep queens total. When this queen in the, in the natural finishes, we'll inject, and at four minutes, we'll get a safety bane nest, because that means we'll be safe against everything. At around four minutes, 350 to four minutes, we're going to send the overlord that we had next to our opponent's main as a dive in to scout our opponent. Usually they'll have a marine or two here ready for the overlord, but we're going to send the overlord in regardless of what they have in position, because almost nine times out of ten, it'll see the starport and what is uh, what add-on is on the starport, and that can help you a lot with vision. After this queen in our natural finishes, we're going to keep spending all our lava, and as soon as we have money, we'll get another queen in our natural. The most important thing with this build is always spend all your lava on drones before you start a queen. You'll see, I started this queen just now, and I have zero lava on the map. That's because having drones early is way more important than having queens early. Because more drones early means more drones later, whereas more queens now doesn't really mean anything for the future. I'm just going to keep droning up until I'm at 52 drones. At 4.30, because this is a standard build where I've seen, let's say I've seen Hellions here with my Ling, or my Overlord Sword Factory making Hellions, and I don't know exactly what air unit my opponent's making, the safest spore timing is just to get a spore in every mineral line at 4.30. Usually it'll line up that you'll get to 52 drones, and then you'll be able to make a drone in each mineral line. Because this is versus AI, my work account is very, very healthy, but this is almost never realistic for an actual game. But what I would recommend is you aim to get to 52 drones by 445 at least every game. As soon as we get to 52 drones, we're going to make an extra 6 slings. That way we'll be safe against like a 6 hellion dive. At 430 around, we're going to start our lair. We're going to go up to 4 creep queens total. And now we're just droning. As soon as we get to 16 drones on every mineral line, so as soon as you see the number 16 on every mineral line, you should take two extra gases in your natural. The next thing we're going to do, once we have the money, I like to drone up to 58 to 59 to saturate the gases when they finish, so you see I have 22 out of 16 ready to saturate the gases, and then I'll take my fourth base, usually around 515. 
As soon as I've taken my fourth base, I'm going to get an extra gas and two extra, uh, two evolution chambers. After my fourth gas a little bit, I'm going to take the fifth gas as well. You guys can take them both at the same time, but I like to delay them a bit just to make sure that I don't, I never have less than 16 drones on minerals. So we're going to go up to five gases total. As soon as our layer's done, we're going to start our baneling speed and we're going to start our 1-1. And then we're just going to drone up to 66, regardless of what your opponent is doing. Always go up to 66 drones. If you took a lot of damage in the early game, you might have to take make a little bit less. But um, since this is a, just going to be a solid build order for it, let's assume that you didn't take any damage, I recommend you go to 66. And at 66 drones, we are only going to make Zerglings until we have a Zergling force that we think is big enough that it can stop a 2 medevac tank push. Usually it's hard, it's hard to say an exact number of Lings that you should make, but a, as a general rule you can usually see that this amount will easily clean up 2 tanks and a bunch of marines. And as soon as you've made that number, it'll usually be when your fourth base is about 80% done, you go back into droning. So as soon as you've made these units, you're safe and you can go up to 72 to 75 drones. As soon as our lair finishes as well, we want to queue up an overseer to go check their main base. So we're going to get the bailing speed, we're going to get 1-1 and we're going to get an overseer to go scout our opponent. I like to make my Hydrodan a bit after I've started my 1-1, one, one, just to be safer if they rush mines, but I'm going to probably recommend something a bit later that uh, you guys should do. Right, so after we've made our units and we've gone to 72 to 75 drones, what we want to do is we want to confirm whether our opponent is taking a 4th base or whether they're going 8 racks. Um, this distinction is quite important because if our opponent is going 8 racks, we don't really want any more drones and we don't really want to tech up, we just want to make mass ling main and start out 2-2 and eventually overpower them with our units. So once our 4th base is done, we're going to get our 6th gas, we're going to scout with lings and our overseer to see if they're playing 8, eight racks or 4th base. So in this game, because it's versus an AI, the timings are a bit weird because they're super optimal, but usually your opponent will start a 4th base no later than like 7.30 to 8 minutes. And they usually start the the eighth barracks long before then. So once you've once you've seen that your opponent's got a fourth base, you're free to drone up to as much as anywhere in the 80s. So I would probably recommend around low 80s, like 80 to 85. And you can also take all your gases. If your opponent is playing eight racks, you should stay on 75 drones with six gas and make only Ling Bane. So I'm going to assume that I just scouted that my opponent is has taken a fourth base. So I'm going to start taking all my gases and droning up. As soon as you've seen this, you should drone up, take all your gases, get your infestation pit and your hydrogen. What we're going to do is play into lurkers. So I've gone up straight to 80 drones and at 80 drones, I'm just making units to be safe. My goal now is to survive until I have lurkers. Usually with lower drone count styles, you have space to do run bys. And it's usually only if you're ahead. But what I'd recommend you guys do is just play defensively and try and get in the habit of getting to lurkers every single game and not just killing your opponents. It'll teach you the mid-game and late-game strategies of the matchup a lot better than if you just do big run buys every game and your opponent misses them. The thing that I might recommend you guys do is to do small bane run buys to your opponent's third base every so often. So when our 1-1 finishes, we start our 2-2. And we're right now we're on eight gases. And we're taking a fifth base. I usually take my fifth base once I know that I'm pretty safe. So after I defend a double drop convincingly and go up to 75 drones, then I usually take my fifth base. But the timing is is kind of up to you. Probably no later than seven minutes is good. When our infestation pit finishes, we're gonna start our hive and our lurker den. And other than that, we're just making Zerglings and Banelings. I'm going to make a few Hydras, assuming that my opponent is going into mines. I would only recommend you make Hydras if your opponent has a lot of mines already. If they're still making tanks, you should just stay on Lingbane. So when my Hive finishes, I'm going to get Lurker Range. I'm going to get Adrenal Glands. And I'm going to make as many Lurkers as I can afford. 
usually if you take your eighth, your seventh and eighth gases early enough, you'll be able to make eight to ten lurkers. And a really easy plan I think would be make these lurkers. If they're pushing you, put them in front of the push. So let's say he's pushing me down by this watchtower. I'll park all my lurkers here and I'll do a big run by with like my whole army. Um, if he's super pushing you and you have lurkers out, it'll be very hard for him to hold. Otherwise, you'll have to play a, a longer game. And that's basically the build. From here, there is going to be probably... You'll, you'll either have to play late game or you'll kill them with a lurker timing. So if he's still on mines and he doesn't have ghosts or tanks out, often you can just run at their base as soon as your two lurker upgrades are done. And just keep making Ling Bane lurker. I wouldn't make more than around 10 or so hydras with this style, maybe even less. And I would just focus on getting a big lurker count and a big zergling count. I've taken the next two gases at my fifth base. You can do this and then go to 90 to 100 drones if you're feeling super far ahead. But other than that, that's basically everything for the standard opening versus bio Terran. Thanks for watching what will be the first in a series of ZVT guides. I realized some of what I said was probably pretty vague, but in the coming weeks I'm going to upload some game analyses versus specific builds, so if you enjoyed what you saw today or found it helpful, I'd appreciate if you left a like and subscribe if you want to catch my future uploads. I'll see you guys then.